It's 26 minutes after 8 on this 24th day of July 2015. This is Morning Express and uh, it's time for us now to have our Friday chat. And remember, this is the day that Barack Obama touches down on Kenyan soil as a U.S. president. The first sitting U.S. president to come to Kenya. So, of course, we're making a big deal out of it. And it is a big deal. Uh, and we're making sure that we do that. Kenyans, we know how to do that. Anyway, do keep it right as we continue. But um, joining me now is... Uh, a cast and uh, George Orido, who is in charge of this. George Orido is the playwright, director, and producer for the play Obama, Dreams from a Father. Good morning. Welcome into the set. Uh, this is uh, George to my immediate left. We have Barack Obama, and then we have Michelle Obama. Wow. What a cast we have here. So we think he's airborne. Kumbi alifika kitabu. He's been around. Now, George, yeah. let me start with you. And um, first of all, what is the play about? Uh, Obama, Dreams of a Feather, is a story about uh, a Kenyan American whose father... A Kenyan American or American Kenyan? He's a Kenyan American. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, we can call him African American, but oh, it's the father. We, we call yeah. him, yeah, uh, uh, Kenyan American. Okay. Well, um, uh, the president is a Kenyan American. Mm -hmm. uh, the one who is arriving today mm -hmm. is a Kenyan American. Uh, the way they say uh, Irish American or German American, okay, or, or Jewish American. Mm -hmm. So, so what is the play about? Yeah. So it's about his life, uh, and also about his father's life who was a, a goat herder somewhere in Kogelo in Alego in Sierra County and who worked very hard in school and had this opportunity to go and pursue education but fell in love. So love is a, a very good thing mm -hmm. because it's because of love that uh, today until Sunday there's a lockdown in Nairobi. <laughs> in Nairobi. Because uh, Ob Barack Obama Sr. falls in love with this woman from Kansas. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and, and, and where well, he went to study at the University of Hawaii. Mm. And, and something really big happened, and Barack Obama Jr. was born. And uh, he, he goes to school, he graduates, instead of remaining a barrister, uh, becomes an organizer mm -hmm. who is very concerned about the plight of his people, the black people in the U.S. So he mobilizes uh, teachers, I mean, uh, you know, churches to uh, get better education, to mobilize uh, communities to remove asbestos roofs, uh, roofs on, 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 on the houses that is, is a cause for cancer. In um, uh, many, many things he did, uh, reduced, making young people registered voters in Chicago. And uh, that's launching his political, uh, you know, uh, ambition. Dream, ambition. ambition. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he, he, first of all, he tried and failed, by the way. Mm -hmm. So it's a good story. Like right? mm -hmm. when you when you fail, you don't give up. You try okay. again. So so did you start preparing this play uh, because you knew Obama was coming? Was this something that you you really worked on, and it just happens to coincide with his coming? This play has a big history. This musical was done in two two or seven two or eight. When it was uh, eminent, uh, you know, the, that Barack Obama was going to make history in the world, becoming the first. Uh, African American to become the, the, the president of the most powerful country in the world. So he did a musical uh, during elections, and when he was elected, we were actually running the show in, uh, in at the Kenya National Theater. It was a big deal. So when it was announced this year that uh, he was finally coming back home, while still in office uh, as president, we got, uh, in fact, the many calls. Like, uh, Orido, what is that musical? Can we bring it back on stage? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, why not? So okay. we brought it back, but we, we have rejuvenated it. We have different music. We have yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and, 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 and some parts to, to just to make it more current. Okay, I'll come back to you on what it entails to actually make a musical and what a musical is as opposed to just, you know, a, a, a drama that, you know, is a play. Uh, but maybe let me come to the cast and I'll start with Barack Obama. Yes. How does it feel to play the most powerful individual? Um, I'm humbled, but at the same time, it is so exciting. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. To try to fit on his shoes is very hard. Try to get that bold expression as a strong leader is not easy. But uh, I think up to now, I've been up to the task, and 
I'm just so humbled to be playing Barack Obama. What does it entail for you to actually play that part? Do you have to study the person as opposed to just a script? Uh, you have to study the person, but you also, yeah, and you also have to know the script well. And, uh, and of course, you have to be a good actor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And try whatever, however you look like, you have to bring Barack Obama on stage. I was actually coming to that now because obviously Barack does not have a hairstyle <laughs> like yours, which, uh, <laughs> to say the least, so, oh, what happens to uh, looking like the character? Because we imagine sometimes as you're acting, you want to look like. I remember the film of uh, Nelson Mandela, and I think it's, uh, what's his name, um, that played uh, Mandela. Mm -hmm. uh, from the accent to the look, literally just, you felt Mandela. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the look, how come the look has not changed to fit Barack Obama? It, at first, it, it looked like a joke. Like, you're Obama, everyone's like, are you Obama? You're, you're, you're the one who's Obama, and I was like, yeah. But the good thing about it is after we, the play has been run on stage and the audience w is watching, they'll be like, you made me forget about your hair, you made me forget about your earrings, you made me forget about your color and your height, you just gave me Barack Obama on stage. And that's the good thing about it. And you know, Maybe, maybe this is how Barack looks from deep inside, inside his heart. <laughs> <you know. laughs> so, anyway, he'll be telling us. And uh, let me come to Michelle. Great to meet you, Michelle. I never expected to meet Michelle Obama this <laughs> lifetime. Uh, so, great to meet you. And what does it entail for you to be Michelle? Well, you have to get into that character. You have to be Michelle. And uh, according to me, I think I am like Michelle. I have the same character as hers. I is that, is her. that in real life or is that now when you step into character? In real life, I can say. Because she, one of her achievements, she, was, uh, she improved arts and she encouraged arts. And I also love arts. So, yeah. I'm humble to play Michelle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And have you had to study her, how she walks, how she talks? I've not really studied her that much, mm -hmm. but what I know is that I've read about her, her achievements, her inspirational speeches, and her support for her husband, where she was born, where she studied, yeah. So in this play, do you have to do anything or are you just standing by your husband? Because you know that's one of the, the roles that we see Michelle has. Okay, basically what I'm doing, I'm just supporting him throughout everything, everything, uh, his elections, his campaigns, I'm always there by his side, always advising him, yeah, supporting okay. him emotionally, physically, mm. and yeah. All right, uh, Obama, back yes. to you. Um, what does playing that role do for you as a person? Does it do anything? It makes me feel, it makes me feel, it makes me feel good about myself. It, hel it, it helps me know that I can, I can achieve more than I can think about. Mm -hmm. I can chill more that I can swallow, you know. It's, it's, it's a challenge to me. And uh, to be up to the challenge and, uh, and achieve some things about the role <coughs> has made me know just a lot about myself and appreciate a lot about myself. Okay. Yeah. George, um, I know plays have different roles that they can play. It can be educative, it can be inspirational, it can just be entertainment. Mm -hmm. This particular one, what do we take home? Oh, the one-stop shop, all that you said, <laughs> is informational, is educator, educational, is very entertaining. And I love musicals because it goes without saying, musicals are very entertaining. And why? Because when a production is entertaining, like Obama films and your father, you have everybody enjoying the performance. And therefore, they're able to persuasively give information very easily. And some of the values that we are uh, is showing in this particular production is a hard work pace, it has a patience pace, it has really good governance. Really, and then the story about Obama being from a minority community in the US and being elected president is a big mirror, it's a big learning lesson for this country. Like, you don't have to come from a big tribe to be the president of, of, of Kenya, you can be in, uh, you know, uh, El Molo. And you become a person because of your character and ability to lead. But some of those are the you know, issues we're discussing in this uh, 
uh, particular part of the, of the production. Okay. Now, with a musical, what's the difference between a musical and just any other play? Oh, okay. Uh, a play, uh, as it is, is a dry run of real life situation whereby, you know, we don't dance all the time, we don't sing all the time, but uh, so the, a play that is uh, on stage, the straight play that we're used to, this nothing is life as it is normally. But with us, we take it at a different level. We do the same, but now in dance, music, and also acting and narration. And this particular, my form of, na uh, of musicals, take uh, the form of narration a lot because it's also African. Our narrative, our storytelling, uh, 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 culture, is, is what I take very close. So you get uh, more of narration than, you know, the enactment of stage. Well, those, those enactments are still there. A lot of stories are told in dance, music, and performance, and movements, uh, which, which are very, very nice to look at. And uh, I seem like when, when uh, Obama gets information that his father has died in Nairobi, uh, on a road accident, and he's mourning, of course, in his memoir, he says, he felt nothing. But that's how a little man uh, feels. Uh, when, when you're told that your mother has died or your, your, your father has died, you don't cry. You, you, you take it in your mind. No, yeah, you don't cry. So this guy, you're writing the book that he didn't, he didn't feel anything. But inside, they feel. <coughs> but they're not sure. So, but, so but when you're enacting it with, with, with a movement, that is very mournful, very. So you get that feeling. Yeah, yeah. And just to let our viewers at home that, uh, or whatever you're watching from, that we're going to reenact a scene from this particular play. It is titled Obama, The Dreams of a Father. And we're going to be giving you just a taste uh, uh, shortly. But let me come to you, Michelle, and ask you now in terms of theater, because I know there are many young people out there who are watching and thinking and wishing the way you play your role. Uh, first, is it, do you do this full time? Not really. Yeah. I'm actually a student. Uh, right now, my, my attachment at KBC, I partake in journalism and mass communication. But then I do theatrics. Um, let's say it's, it's like a hobby. Have my, when I have time, I do theatrics. Yeah. Okay. And uh, is it something you'd wish to expand and do full time? Yeah, I would love to expand theatrics uh, because it has been my passion since I was young. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Obama, you is this full time? Are you a full time president? For me, for me, I'm not a full time president. Me, can, can you do Obama's accent? Do you have to do Obama's accent? A little bit of it. You could answer the question in, you know, Obama style. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I have to. I have to do a little bit of the accent because you know, for me to get into character, I have to convince my audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, do you do this full time? Yeah, I do this full time. I'm a performing artist. I'm a dancer. I'm a choreographer. I'm a, an actor. I'm a songwriter. I'm a poet. I'm an event organizer. I'm just a full time package of a performing artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is what I do full time. Okay. Yeah. George, what is your uh, take on the response of Kenyans to theater? Well, it's big, it's mm -hmm. huge. In fact, today we have a problem of getting venues to do performances because the demand is very high. And a lot of uh, uh, performances now, the quality and the uh, uh, theater companies have created a niche for themselves. And those who just do uh, passes, the, those who do, who do musicals like now, as uh, there are those who do uh, tragedy and those who do comedy, and they're all full. And you can even see some of the uh, uh, stand-up comedy performance that are enacted on TV, mm -hmm. the full houses. Right. And so theatre has come of age in Kenya, mm -hmm. and, and I think it's a good thing that the new national theatre is going to open soon next month. Okay. But, and, and therefore, we, we are, we, and even the response here was been, been very good. I've realized that uh, we also, looking at the adverts, I've seen there's quite a number of vernacular yeah. uh, plays that have also come up. Mm -hmm. Is that a good thing and is that a growth towards the industry? It's a good thing. Yeah. It, 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 if it's in vernacular, then obviously it uh, segments that only those who understand can attend. Yeah, that's why it's theatre. In theatre is not for mass communication, it's for niche market. So if there is a group of people who want to enjoy theatre in a language that they know best, it's a very good thing. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, 
uh, for example, Kikuyu, Luo, or, or now Tramba coming, is a very good thing. You know, a place like Denmark, the population is just uh, 5 million. Some of the tribes that we have in Kenya are more than 5 million. Mm -hmm. So those, those languages are having are very important, and it's important also to express ourselves. You know, the only thing, the only caution I want to put is that whenever there are those performances, let them not abuse that forum in terms of, you know, creating a, 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 negative, a, a negative agenda, agenda right. in terms of negative ethnicity against others who are not understanding the language. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's a very clean thing to do. Okay. Yeah. Obama, um, what are some of the challenges you'd say you faced uh, in theater and especially, particularly this particular play, trying to play such a, uh, an iconic person? Oh, uh, first of all, I am not Obama. I am Billy. So just getting on stage and getting into character is hard work, a lot of hard work. And uh, sometimes you, you have a disagreement with the cast, fellow cast, or sometimes the producer because you're not, you're, not, you're not bringing out the quality and then you're not getting into character like is needed. So that sometimes is so challenging, but as an artist, you just have to go with it and give the quality that is demanded from you. So that pressure in the art industry is, uh, is something that makes other people quit the art industry. But what you should do is just go hard and do whatever you're doing to your best and you'll stand out. Mm. Yeah. Michelle, some of the challenges maybe you faced, especially given now that you don't do this full time. Mm, actually, <laughs> casting Michelle has not been quite a challenge to me because it has been easy to get her character because um, I've knew her. And uh, the challenge here goes to the musical, the fact that it's a musical. You have to dance, do a lot of things in one, dance, sing, and then do Michelle. So the pressure from the directors, that's one of my challenges. Uh, from the director here, Big George. <laughs> Does he demand a lot? Not really. You just mm -hmm. have to listen to him and do what he says and everything will be okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. George, uh, how, how, um, how much talent do we have for this kind of thing? And what's the future for theater? Because I'm sure one of the challenges you probably would agree is having a cast that is doing full time. Because that way you get more commitment, you get more dedication, you get more practice time. Uh, what's the future in your opinion of theater in Kenya? Okay, the challenge is huge. We have so many Lupita Nyongots in this country. What we don't have, we don't have policy uh, papers that now regulate the industry. The creative industry is huge. And, you know, the last uh, World Intellectual Property Right Organization research mm -hmm. showed that 5% of our GDP, Kenya's GDP, is from the creative industry. Uh, what we need, we need to have laws that protect uh, copyright issues so that people don't come and steal the ideas. We need to have laws that protect actors that are not exploited by producers. Uh, we need to have laws that also protect producers from uh, service providers so that they, 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 they're in a stable environment of operation. And we need an art council. It's, I congratulate the government for appointing uh, the first ever di director of the arts. Mm -hmm. I read Mr. Protos and Young, and I hope he's going to do a good job. Mm -hmm. But we need an art council that manages cu uh, culture uh, affairs here. And, and let me tell you, art and culture is heavily subsidized all over the world. So we need uh, a foundation, a fund that can find, uh, you know, uh, creative industries that are coming up so that we have something that is running on every day, turning every day. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of talent. If you go to the Kenya Schools and Colleges Dama Festival, or the Music Festival, uh, it's amazing. And uh, for example, the film uh, category has now about three, uh, uh, 3,000 films mm -hmm. that just is waiting to be shown to public. And a very good film, I tell you, Nollywood cannot come anywhere near of the content that I think that now the Kenya Drama Festival has in terms of film. In terms of film. Yeah. All right, and I'll come to Obama, and maybe the question to you would be, we have a huge um, uh, consumption of foreign theater. He's just mentioned Nollywood, we have those uh, operas. Uh, why don't we have more Kenyan stuff on air? Uh, for me, what I th basically think is uh, we need a, we need a huge media industry. We need enough TV stations, we need, we need enough radio stations, you know, we need enough 
print media is just to give at least 70% of the artists that are working right now a chance to showcase their things because I think there's a lot of programs and movies going on, there's a lot of music and musicians, you know, but there's not enough platform for us to, to showcase or for all artists sh to share. So the platform is, is like we have a whole chunk of Ugali, for example, with a small plate in the middle, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So this Ugali will not balance on it. So I think we need a, a bigger platform. A bigger plate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You think, Michelle, is the plate well, too small? It's not that small, but then, as my colleague has said, we need a bigger platform and then believe and support from the people around us. They Do you feel believe. Kenyans uh, enjoy Kenyan stuff? Yeah, Kenyans enjoy Kenyan stuff, especially theatrics, but then uh, films, it's a little bit ish-ish. Most of them like watching uh, movies from abroad and mm -hmm. stuff, but then it, it's a high time we believe in ourselves that we can make it if we start from somewhere. Just support and believe in the people around us. Okay. Well, shortly we're going to uh, be taking a break and then uh, we'll have a reenactment from a scene within this uh, particular play, Obama, Dreams for, of a Father. And uh, George, before we go to that, where is it showing? When is it showing? Okay. Uh, we're showing at the Kenya National Theatre uh, on the, on the, Kenya, uh, the concert hall side because uh, the main theater has not yet been opened by the resection of the president. I'm told it's going to open in August. Uh, and it is at 7 o'clock today. And let me tell you, it's very important for those who want to watch this show to book their tickets today because we are canceling our shows tomorrow and Sunday because of the, so the, trans of the, 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 the transport the and, and the safari comes saying we are going to, we are going to have a logistical nightmare. Mm -hmm. So uh, in as much as we are, we are the baptized that uh, we're going to have this show tomorrow, and Sunday, unfortunately, we can't do it. It's not going to be possible for us. So the, the last show will be today. And then maybe when this, the dust of Obama settles down, mm -hmm. we can again come back and show it to those who are not able to watch it today. Okay. And uh, for those who are going to come, what should they expect? What is their take home? Oh, oh entertainment, massive, emotional uh, uh, journey. You, you're gonna cry. You're gonna laugh with us. You're gonna, you, you're gonna enjoy. You be on the edge of your seat. These guys are wonderful, uh, and I, I hope when you have the time to see a little bit of Nightman, a lot of people can say, "Oh, it's magical. We've not seen something like this in a long time." Mm -hmm. Yes, and because also in Kenya we have very few musicals that are our own stories. A lot of musicals are movies that were done some 400 years ago or some 100 years ago. <laughs> I know deodorites with Kenyan names and, <laughs> and, and places. But okay. when you do regional stuff, mm -hmm. and you're going to hear a lot of uh, stories that are very close to your heart as a Kenyan. All right, thank you very much. Yes. Now, we'll go to the point where we are going to reenact a scene from uh, the play. And uh, I guess George and I might step out of the yeah, set so sure. that uh, we'll give them an opportunity to do that. So, uh, director, we go straight to that. And um, this is from the play Obama, Dreams of a Father. And, of course, this is in preparation as we prepare to have the most powerful man in the world stepping on Kenyan soil today, the first sitting U.S. president to come to Kenya. Uh, and this, of course, is historic. And this play also brings that history closer. So here we go. Uh, if we can have those who are also participating in the cast to come in. And at this point, I'll just get out of the yep. set. Mm -hmm. Obama dreams of a father, and we would love to share our artistic quality with you all over the world and even Kenya. We're actually humbled to be here just to show you an excerpt of what we are doing. This excerpt is just a part of the play whereby Obama is actually 
for the mother's actually having uh, some time with the father and the father wants him to do something that is actually going to help him. So we actually want to share with this and this is coming up for you right now. Obama senior, now a senior government bureaucrat in Nairobi, top autocratic class, building the nation. A speech he gives inspires. I am so proud of him. He finds me watching my favorite TV program and switches the tail off. I am so mad, so mad, I cry. He says, The noble does not joke around watching TV. He reads and reads, chews volumes and volumes of books. He discovered the papyrus raid. He made the Egyptian pyramid. He was the first Egyptian pharaoh. He is sharp and hardworking. Passes his exams with the truly flying colors, top of the class. Omira, you are no exception. The woman doesn't joke around watching TV. Reads and reads, reads and reads. Choose volumes. And the means of books He discovered the papyrus weed And he made Egyptian pyramid And he made the sweet The movie doesn't joke around Watching TV He reads and reads Reads and reads Choose volumes And volumes of books he discovers the papyrus weed, and he made Egyptian pyramid, and he made the sea. Till suddenly he leaves. Will I ever see him again? But remember my father's words. The Luba does not joke around watching TV. He reads and reads. He chews volumes and volumes of books. He discovered the papyrus rings. He made the Sphinx. He was the first Egyptian pharaoh. He is sharp and hardworking, and he passes his exams with truly flying colors, top of the class. Omera, you are no exception. It was while working with a law firm involved with organizing that I met a young, beautiful, lovely woman from Chicago Southside. Her charming ways were truly irresistible. I had fallen in love with a lawyer like me. And her name, her name was Michelle. Yet I had to follow the practice of my ancestors to take my love, my fiance, before the village elders, to my grandmother, my brothers, my uncles, my sisters. How bad I want to take the daughter of Chicago Southside before the village elders. I want to be taken by you. I want to be taken now. To meet your grandmother, your uncles, your brothers, your sisters. Oh, how I badly want to be taken. The daughter of Chicago Southside to call yellow before the village of elders. You wanna eat? Oh, I wanna eat some whiskey. You wanna taste some gaga? Oh, I wanna taste some gaga. You wanna eat some butter? Oh, I want butter. You wanna bathe by the riverside? Oh, I want the river. Take me now, please, take me. 